Minders. Just wanted to throw a quick video at you today about uh, Inktober supplies and what I've been using, what a lot of times I use or have used in the past, and also some new discoveries that I'm making. Uh, if you saw my last video, you already saw uh, how much I like uh, Photo Blue Pencil for doing working out the roughs under a drawing. Um, and how I went to regular pencil after that. Um, it doesn't matter what you use, wood pencil, uh, lead holder like this. Um, but I just want to show you my sharpener. This is a, a two millimeter lead sharpener. And basically you drop the lead down into this hole and it, it lengthens it to the right length for you and then you just sharpen. So that's really easy and convenient. You can also use red. I didn't demonstrate that, but red is used a lot by animators and cartoonists. It's just slightly darker. Uh, and I have used this. I used this on tone paper. Now, I don't recommend you use either one on a finished watercolor painting. I usually do this just for ink or ink and wash in a, in a sketchbook. Especially if you're going to do a lot of erasures, because uh, this is a waxy, these are waxy kind of pencils. A little bit, it's not going to hurt, but of course it's going to be seen, and if you do a lot of erasing, it might affect the paper. Anyway, uh, I primarily use that met the method with pencil sketching or pen and ink sketching. Now in that process video I last did, uh, I showed the second step that I often use as pencil to refine the line. If you're confident enough, you can skip that point and go right from a colored line to an ink. And a lot of pros and experienced artists will often do that. However, if you really are trying to work out your hatching and exactly how dark, how thin, how light, whatever, uh, it's a good idea to just go ahead and take that pencil stage through. Now, I don't have any specific recommendations necessarily about pencil, no newfound discoveries. I do love mechanical pencils. This is a Uni Curatoga Roulette. It's supposed to rotate the lead when you put pressure down on it to keep it sharp, but I've never found that to be a particularly uh, useful thing or noticeable thing. It's just a great pencil. It's a great uh, sort of anodized aluminum with an aluminum little knurled grip here, and I like it. Uh, I have several mechanical pencils, and I like several of them, so no real recommendations there. But let's get to the ink, because I'm uh, trying different things, and one of the things that I mentioned that I wanted to do in Inktober was try different ink supplies that I'd never tried before and do uh, full pieces with them. So in the demo I did in my last video, you saw that I did uh, a fine liner, and I used this one. Maybe it was this one. Anyway, the Pigma Micron. Everybody knows the mighty Pigma Micron. It's one of the most common and easy to find. Everybody carries them from office supplies to craft stores to whatnot. But I'm also really loving these Copics. This is a set. And I'll pull out, particularly, I'll pull out the point zero three Because uh, that is so, so fine. Um, and, and anyway, I really like... Yeah, I mean, you can just see that is hair, hair, hairline. Barely even shows up unless you put a little pressure. So in really light hatching, I like that. And I like having this set because I can move right down the line to heavier pens. This is a .05, which is a step up from that. And you can get a .05 also in uh, the Sakura Pigma Micron. Uh, lately I've been using the Statler pigment liner. Really does the same thing as all other pigment liners. Statler just has a slightly higher quality quotient. Uh, I think they last longer. I think you can keep the cap off longer on these. Now this is a heavy one. Apparently the tips uh, are a little more robust. Stand up to a little more punishment. So, if you have access to those. Don't be afraid of them. They're great, great pens. Really high quality. As you also saw in my last video, my full process video, I did a lot of inking with this, with uh, a dip pen. 
This is a Zebra G. It's a commonly used uh, dip pen for comics and manga. It's a Japanese uh, nib. And uh, it's my favorite. There's also a Nico G, which is almost identical to it. That's a Nico G. That's a Zebra G. Both are commonly used in comics. Um, I thought I would just talk just a little bit more about the differences in a fine liner. Let's get the Sakura Micron, which is their 01. It's not their finest, but it's pretty fine. And for this, I'm going to zoom in a little closer. So that's a point one. And then we'll go, I'll show you this again, a close up of this uh, Copic Multi Liner. 0 0.03, the finest one I've ever seen. Very fine. Now, the thing about multi liners or uh, fine liners, as they call them, is it's a mono weight line. It gives you one weight line. Mostly, there is a thing that you can do called feathering. And I'm going to get out this heavier one so you can see it. Feathering is starting with a press and then lifting up with a, almost like a flick and you can see hopefully you can see how that just fades off to a point it's a great technique to learn especially if you want uh, a set of hatching which is in, in your pen and ink hatching is usually your tone so if I'm putting down parallel lines to make that a tone uh, you can make tone fade out by feathering it And it appears to fade okay so feathering but we're going to show you two or three different utensils and how uh, they're affected or how they uh, look when they're feathered but I do a lot of feathering I do a lot of feathering with the uh, uh, fine liners Sakura works well too oh this is actually a brown huh okay whatever hopefully you can still see that So fine liners, single weight, unless you're doing some feathering. Uh, so at what point do you think about or want to maybe switch to uh, a dip pen, a nib? Well, uh, it just gives you more variation in your line and it allows you to be a little more expressive. They will put out an extremely fine line, especially this Zebra G. And you see here I'm getting a line just as fine as that finest multi-liner and it does make a difference which way you ink if you go side to side uh, I find you tend to get your finest line and then you can get into the flex uh, aspects of a dip pen where you press slightly um, one of the things comic artists and cartoonists illustrators of all types really love doing is drawing a lot along and that expressiveness in the thickness of the line. Just pull back on the pressure and you can get a more mono weight line. You just have a lot of line options. So I don't think that's really any surprise probably to you. Uh, but I just wanted to sort of more succinctly point out why you might choose a dip pen over a fine liner. And there are illustrators galore that just use fine liners. They don't ever de delve into dip pens because they are messy. So just a word about ink. Uh, I used to use India ink mostly with dip pens, but I've, I've been more or less using this now, Sumi ink. There's not a lot of difference. Sumi ink tends to be more matte. Uh, I like the way it flows better off of nibs. Um, although you can buy it like this is a really good India ink. This Dr. Martin's Black Star. It's a waterproof India ink, but it has a matte, dries to a matte finish. Uh, most India inks dry kind of glossy if you have a lot or a thick application of it. Uh, that's Dr. Martin's. Dr. Martin's also makes the Bombay black India ink, very high quality India ink. So India ink is fine. Uh, but lately I've been using Sumi ink, which I, I use for calligraphy when I do it. 
Uh, it also works great for, I think, dip pens. This, and I like this Kurataki Suma Ink 60. Anyway, back to using a dip pen. One of the things you need to be careful about, uh, they will do a really wide to a really thin line, but it's not something you may want to do, uh, at least not with a dip pen. So let me demonstrate. You're going along, you say, oh, I've got a really, uh, this is really fine, and I want it to get to a really wide line. Dip pens do that. They do it great. But what they also do is leave this really heavy, thick blob of ink, and it takes almost forever to dry. There's a better way to do that. I usually, when I'm using a dip pen to vary the thickness of the line, I usually don't vary it any more than that. Or, you know, if I'm feathering, I usually don't get any thicker than that. And even then, these little blobbed ends will take a while to dry. So that's one thing you want to be careful of. The pens are great for expressive, expressive lines, very, very fine lines and hatching. The one thing I wanted to touch on quickly before I move on to different types of supplies is breaking in a nib. I touched on it briefly in uh, my inking, my full process inking video. Usually you want to clean a nib if it's brand new so that it, it accepts ink and the ink stays. Uh, if you get one that's properly broken in and it will hold a nice level reservoir of ink, you can ink for a long, long time with a nib like this. This I've used alcohol on. I think I, I probably scrubbed it a little bit and uh, put ink in it, wiped it out, put ink in it, wiped it out, and got it broken in. So let me dip it and I want to show you what that looks like. This is what you want. This this, you see that nice level pool of ink in there? That's what you want. Um, if, it's, if it doesn't do this, if it beads up into a, like a little droplet, it's not properly broken in. And I'll probably be able to ink three, four minutes with that much ink, uh, depending on how uh, heavy my lines are. Okay, see? I found this Dr. Martin's Bombay Pen Cleaner. Works really well for not just getting your nib clean, but also helping you break it in. Um, and this may be all you need right here. Usually, I try dipping the pen and rinsing it off and then using this pen cleaner and dipping it again. And usually after doing that a couple times, my pen's broken in. So that's something you may want to give a try. There are other brands too, but this works fine. All right, so let's talk about a couple of new discoveries that I'm making and supplies that I'm using uh, during October, and I'm really enjoying. Uh, first is this Zebra. It's called a Zebra Fude Extra Fine Brush Pen. Now, when I did uh, brush pen reviews and pen reviews last year, I think I included this, but I didn't get into much detail. And I've never really inked a full illustration with it, but this last a video I made I used it quite a bit quite a bit so um, it gives a very fine line not as fine as the dip pen or the f the finest fine liner but it does give you a pretty fine line if you're up on the tip but you can flatten it out and get a th thick line now if you're trying to get a line like this that I did with the dip pen uh, this is the kind of pen you want to use. This and another I'll show you in a minute. Because it dries almost instantly. And I think that's the beauty of this pen. It's, it's really a hard tip, but it flexes. Sort of like, almost like a felt tip pen, but it's, it's harder than a felt tip. So you can be drawing along and just put in these really heavy lines okay that's the way to do a line like this let me show you another one this is the pilot this is a dual tip brush pen it's got the same kind of tip on this end it's not as fine as the zebra so if you want to move to a heavier brush pen you can do that um, and it does the same thing it flexes and gives you a brush 
uh, stroke. Great for inking in heavy lines and then moving to a finer line. You can even go over finer lines that you've done and add a little bit of darkness to the ends. But this dual tip brush pen has the same brush on the other end but it's filled with gray. So that's kind of cool, you know, if you're if you're confident enough to do some rough sketching in pen, and I'm, I'm not drawing anything in particular, I'm just scumbling here, draw it in gray pen. Or you can shade with the gray pen after you're done. Or you can go back then over your sketch and find your line in a final black. You can hatch in gray if you want. It's an interesting idea for sketching. Okay. Then finally, I think the sort of the, the top of the line, or the, the boldest of the bold is, is more accurate, is the brush pen, the real brush pen. This has uh, got a real brush on the end uh, with fibers that separate. It's not a felt tip or a hard tip. Uh, one that I used to use a lot is the Pentel Pocket Pen. This is uh, identical to the Pentel Pocket Pen. Uh, pretty much in size and all. It's a little nicer. This this is the uh, Platinum. And uh, it's just a really nice cartridge pen, but it uses Platinum ink. Which I, I, is a favorite of mine. I love Platinum ink. So let's talk again, again about that thin to thick line. Uh, this is the ultimate way to get that. And it takes a little more control, but uh, you can go to a line like that. And if you want to go even bigger, you can go with something like this. This is great, you know, for wide brush strokes like that, filling in and inking with ink that dries, soaks in and dries fairly quickly. Everything I'm showing you here is pretty much waterproof too. You can uh, watercolor over it uh, if you just make sure you give it time to dry. So just quick review. Fine liners. Mono weight. Fine. Easy to control. Dries instantly. Permanent. Um, you can do a little bit of thick thin feathering with. Probably one of the easiest use to use and easiest to find. Dip pens next can get just as fine as the finest fine liner, but allow you to add more expression to your line. Can even go really thick, but don't recommend to use them for that due to the uh, amount of ink it puts on the paper and the amount of drying time. Hard point brush pens. This is one of the finest in terms of line width. Zebra. Feathers really well. Gives you nice expressive thick thin lines. Dries on the paper almost instantaneously. Okay. Another brush pen with a slightly bolder line. And there are several on the market. I'm only showing you two. But again, different boldnesses of these hard point brush pens. Then real brush pens such as this. This platinum. You actually may be more familiar with this one. This is the uh, Pentel pocket pen. Same thing. And then last but not least large brush pens. Ones like this and the pocket brush pen can actually get pretty fine lines if you learn how to control them. So if you're new to inking, uh, I hope that gives you some clarity, some things to think about. I hope you'll ask some questions if you have them, because I kind of went through a mouthful there. Uh, but um, just thought it'd be helpful if you're participating. Many of you have said you're participating in Inktober, so I'm really happy to hear that. So let me know what your favorite supplies are, what you're liking, uh, what you've discovered that you had not tried before. 
I'll put a list below in the video to all of these uh, in case you want to try something new. And thanks. We'll see you guys in the next video.